us, uh, Richard, Anik, um, and uh, Michael, and the logo be made by Simon Lloyd. As we were saying, the logo was because there are many magnets, but not many magnets with the Z. So I think we can stick with this um, from now on. Uh, usually the seminars are 25 minutes. Um, and then after that, we usually have 10 to 15 minutes for question or discussions. Uh, text questions are always welcome. You can, you can have them in the text box um, and we can read them out for you. Um, it's an informal environment, so if you need to go, you can, you can go. And after the seminar is finished, we will be here uh, for a non-recorded time uh, to catch up uh, if you're interested. So the the YouTube uh, the YouTube uh, uh, video is going to be hosted by Earthref and Magic team, which uh, for which we are very grateful. And they, there's going to be uh, also uh, do I associated with that? The schedule for now is today we have Florence Milanese, and in October 14 we will have Sayoa Campuzano and on 25th of November at the Kia Tema and December we're gonna have a Christmas break. I think that's the plan so far. We're always looking for new speakers for the following year and any, if you have any idea of criticism to where to improve this series of seminars, they're all welcome. So for now I'm gonna have, uh, I am gonna leave uh, Florencia to her presentation. She, uh, you can you can start sharing your screen. I will okay. stop sh sharing mine. We are still not seeing it. Okay. Yes. No. Are you seeing my screen now? Yes. No. Yes. Okay. Thank you. No. Okay, and I will. So you are seeing the, the whole screen presentation, yes. right? Yes, thank you, Florence. Yes. Good. Okay, so hello, everybody. Thank you for, for being here. Um, this presentation is based uh, on the results of my PhD thesis. Uh, so it's pretty much an already finished work. So here I'm, I'm going to summarize all those results. And, and actually the last paper coming out from it was published at the beginning of this of this year and, and it's very classic of um, max trap uh, job and uh, many institutions cooperated for this work to be done uh, the i did all the writing and, and analyzing and the rock mag analysis at the buenos aires uh, paleomagnetic laboratory the instituto antarctico argentino provided the um, the logistics for the field work and I uh, processed all my paleomagnetic samples at uh, Caltech uh, laboratory and this is the people that cooperated with the whole or at least with with part of the of the work I organized the presentation in four sections so uh, at first I will give you a summary of the stratigraphy uh, of the Jane Ross basin then I will point out some interesting aspects or some of the problems I, I think uh, it will be the problems I think will be solved with the uh, magnetostratigraphy. Then I will show the results and then the, the conclusion or the, or the final chronostratigraphic framework coming out from the magnetostratigraphy. So here is the James Ross Basin. It is located here at the northeastern tip of the Antarctic Peninsula and and going from from bigger to smaller the literature refers uh, to to everything to the sedimentary cover below the Weddell Sea uh, as Weddell Basin then uh, when we are speaking about the offshore uh, Antarctic Peninsula platform basin, we speak of Larsen Basin. And the James Ross Basin is basically the outcropping part of the Larsen Basin. And, and 
and the outcrops that, that form the James Ross Basin are in this archipelago from James Ross Island and smaller surrounding islands, plus a few southern smaller outcrops here. But basically James Ross Basin is this, this, this archipelago. So this basin started as a backyard basin with an active arc uh, place here at the Antarctic Peninsula. And, and it has more than six kilometers of sedimentary thickness that span from Baramian to Eocene. And the target of our work is the Cretaceous infill of the basin, which is divided in two mega sequences. The first one is from, from it goes from the option to conation, and it is the deep marine sediments uh, from the Gustav group. And, and this group is, it was deposited during an, an active uh, faulting environment, uh, during an extensional environment. And, and, it, and it is coarser than the Morambi group, which is our specific target. Uh, and, and these fine sediments from the Morambi group uh, are interpreted as the deposits of a prograding shelf uh, developed during an inversion stage of the basin. So um, there are many, many characteristics for this basin to be important, but I, I put the, the, the three I believe uh, the most notorious. Uh, this basin is extremely fossiliferous. There are a lot of fossils here, uh, a lot of there. So a lot of bivalves, ammonites, um, gastropods, uh, many vertebrates, palinomorphs, there are dinosaurs, marine reptiles, birds, everything. So, and, and fossils, they, they have this very well state of preservation. There's also the Cretaceous Paleogene boundary there uh, at Marambio or Seymour Island, and it has hydrocarbon producer potential. Not many oil exploration has been made in Antarctica because it is not allowed, but it's another aspect. We are not, of course, talking about uh, this in this presentation. So, so these characteristics make, make, a, make this basin like a, like a, reference, a reference section because it, it records everything that happened uh, after the Mona breakup. So it's a very continuous sedimentary record from Bahramian to Eocene. And, and it is also a very interesting place to, to study biodiversity patterns and extinction patterns in polar regions before and after the mass extinction. Uh, but there are, there are some problems and, and, and this, this problems that, that hamper the, the quality of, of being a reference section for the spacing uh, they, they are the, the diachronism uh, in the extinction patterns and the endemism of these species. So, so many species are, are from Antarctica exclusively and they are not in, in the rest of the world. So it's very difficult to correlate, uh, to correlate them. And, and, and several fauna groups, uh, they die earlier in Antarctica than in the rest of the world. So the, the intra-basin correlation was, was based on, on ammonites assemblages. This guy did the, 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 main, the main job. And, and, and what we see in the James Ross uh, infill, in the Cretaceous infill, is that uh, for the early companion, many ammonites uh, groups, many ammonite groups disappear. And also these uh, Bibles and the Cheramids and, and many organisms disappear uh, early, during the early companion, but for example, these bivalves, they are found in South America, in Tierra del Fuego. They are found even in the early restriction. So, um, oh, and, and, and the other one that happens here is after the early companion, because uh, when they, they become very dominant uh, with respect to the rest of the final groups. So, so this diachronism and endemism make, makes it difficult to, for this basin to be uh, correlated globally. 
Uh, here is a uh, uh, current stratigraphic framework, and, and it is divided in two areas. So the, the, Norway, the Northwest Dense Rose Basin area, uh, it involves uh, the, the most proximal facies, which is logical because the, the magmatic arc is here, and also the oldest facies. So the, this uh, Gustav group, it, it, it only outcrops here at, at Northwestern Jambros Island. And the southeast area of the basin includes um, all the distal facies and also the, the, the newest units. And, and the same units uh, reaches more thickness in the distal area. So basically, as we move to the southeast, we go for, for, from older and proximal to younger and, and deeper. So this, this um, max strat work, uh, I, I'm going to present it separated into in, in proximal and, and, and distal area. And here in green, uh, what we have is, is the different, uh, it's a summary of the different age models proposed by by different paleontologists. So depending on, on which organism they base uh, their biostratigraphy on, uh, we have different age models. So from polynomorphs and ammonites, um, the Canadian Antonium boundary is, is placed in the Gustav group and Marambio group uh, boundary. The, um, and, and, and a little higher according to inoterimates and strontium stratigraphy. So what the first the most is the Santonian companion boundary, because according to Oliveros Ammonites, it is at the base of Santa Marta formation here. And according to Inoterimates and, and, and Strontian isotope stratigraphy, it is pretty much higher in, in, the, in the beta member. So we will try to, and, and there is no match difference between the companion and restriction boundary. So we will try to sort these, these discrepancies with magnetostratigraphy. So um, in the proximal part of the basin, we sampled uh, these units, so that the upper Gustav group and, and Santa Marta and, and the lower Snow Hill Island formation. And this is a detailed uh, geological scheme. So this, this composite uh, stratigraphical column was, was made by Olivero like 20 years ago. And, and the correlations between partial sections was based on ammonites and, and lithology, but, but mostly on ammonites assemblages. So here's HL section, here is HL section, here's MOT, here's MOT within the, the Santa Marta formation and so on. So, so as we move southeast, we go, we go higher stratigraphically. So this is for you guys to see how is the, the field work done. There is an, there is an uh, Argentinian Antarctic base here and they drop us by helicopter to every year field area, field work area. So we set uh, these campsites in the place for one month, one month and a half, depending on how many outcrops we have to sample. And, and we eat here, we, we put our stuff here. We sleep in this pyramidal tent and we go to the bathroom here. And the sections were measured with, with Jacob's stuff and, and we drilled. So all, all, all samples were, were oriented uh, there, most of the samples. The problem with the Marambi group sediments is that they are very unconsolidated. So, so th this was not the rule, not many hard beds to drill. So most of the times uh, we had to find concretions in, in, in the unconsolidated sediments. And sometimes we had to take block samples. Sorry, it's not, okay. So these are, these are views uh, from the outcrops. This is the, a, a view of HL here, hidden lake formation. Uh, this is a view looking to the south from G 120 section within the alpha member. This is a picture of a path, but definitely not the rule. F16, which is here, beta member, still Santa Marta formation. And, and this is a picture of uh, Snow Hill Island formation, this, this along shore section. 
I did not take the samples. This, these two sections were sampled by Caltech group like one or two years before I got into the project, but, but I analyzed the data. I used the data. So some rock mag, uh, I usually bore geologists to death with rock mag and insidable diagrams. And now that I have the public, I won't because I don't have time, but uh, what, what we infer from, from, from rock mag is we have titan magnetite. Uh, is there is these cycles show that samples saturate about 200, 300 milliteslas. Uh, coercivities are about tens of milliteslas. And, and from lorry fuel tests, we, we see that ARM is harder to, to wash than IRM when applying alternating fields. So for us, it's, it's titanomagnetite, the, the magnetic carrier. And, and paleomagnetic behaviors for, for this section, and it's, it's pretty constant for, for the whole basin, for the whole Morambi group. Um, so most of the time, uh, the magnetization could not proceed farther than, than 300 uh, degrees, maybe 450 if you were lucky. Samples just went crazy about the temperature, probably because of new mineral formations. Uh, most components were isolated using principal component analysis. In some cases, we applied gray circles. And, and the main demagnetization process was thermal with a, um, with a low temperature, low fill uh, cycle. So some, sometimes when during those first steps of, of two nitrogen cycles and NAF until 69 nanoteslas, maybe we obtain a viscous component. But most of the time, yeah, we, I mean, samples just died uh, before we could delete all the magnetization. This is an exception, but I wanted to show it anyway, in which by 550 degrees, we still have the 40% of the magnetization. So probably some magnetite uh, is present here too. Um, and these are the results for the, for the Northwest area. So this is declination, this is inclination, and, and, and the dots are for uh, BGP paleo latitude, the angular distance between BGPs and, and mean paleo. So what we see here is at the base, uh, a, a, a more or less continuous, it's everything normal at the base. So until G120, until here, everything is, is normal, right? And from G120 and up, everything becomes reverse, except for, for one, two, three normal levels, but everything is pretty much reverse until the upper half of F16 here within the beta member. And from then and up, normals start again. And everything is pretty much normal except for, for these two these two levels. So putting all these partial sections together, why it's not moving? Sorry, just frozen. Okay, so putting all these partial sections together, we build this, this composite column and we know for sure that, that this is normal Cretaceous supercritical because every fossil says so, it, it can't be anything else. So, and, and all this reverse, it, it, is, it has to be C33R and, and from, and, and we know for sure that this boundary here, it is C33R, C33N. We don't know how far we reach in C33N. And, and if, if you see here that there is not, there is a lot of sedimentary thickness uh, covered. So not very continuous uh, record here. So, so we did not correlate this, these two levels with anything and, and, and we did not make any correlation with um, 
the, the global polarity time scale for, for this interval. But, but we know for sure that this is C34N and, and this is C33R. So we found, or, or, or yeah, we found a Syntonian companion boundary here uh, within alpha member around here. And, and there are two proposals for, for, for the age of this, of this boundary. So according to, to AUG and collaborators, the, um, the limit agrees with the base of C33R. And, and according to the International Commission on Stratigraphy, they adopt this, um, this last opinion datum of this crinoid for, for, for the Syntonian companion boundary. But of course we are on, on team base of C33R. So, so this is the, the boundary we, we take. So now moving, uh, moving to the distal part of the basin. Uh, there, are, there are many isolated sections here to, to put together. So we will start with, with the basal rubber formation with its partially equivalent to Santa Marta. So it's slightly, slightly younger. And what we have for rubber formation, uh, it has three overlapping sections. So these three sections, they, they record more or less the same stratigraphic interval. So th these are views of, of the sections. This is a view from base to top from, from Hamilton Norte. Um, th this is a view of, of, uh, of Rabot from, from Redonda Point. And, and here at the top, there are these uh, Miocene, Pliocene volcanics from the James Ross Island volcanic group, which are in, in at the top of many Cretaceous outcrops. Uh, there is more rock mag here. Um, so from, from low temperature thermomagnetic uh, susceptibility curves, we see much paramagnetic contribution. Um, from high temperature, what we see is all, all curves are not reversible. So probably new, I mean, new minerals form uh, during heating. And, and another thing I, I inferred from, from these curves is that there is no uh, blocking temperature, there, there is no mineral with a blocking temperature below 500, 550 uh, degrees Celsius. And these are the magnetic parameter, parameters, which are, are very similar to the proximal. This is not only for the rabbit formation, these are for the whole Southeast area. And again, crucivities are, are are around tens of, of millitesimals. So the, the three columns put together, it was it was very easy to over uh, to correlate them. I mean, I mean, besides uh, the ammonites assemblages, there is this green volcanic elastic bed, very obvious, very notorious. It was in in in, in the the three sections. So what we see in the three columns is a, a, a basal reverse and an upper normal. In thermal. So the, 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 the reversion is within assemblage, ammonites assemblage six. And we also found this, uh, this reverse interval in, in all three columns. But, but this is the, the only possible correlation because this reverse has to be uh, C33R because of the ammonites. So uh, about the rabbit formation, we have the, the Hamilton point member, the Stone Hill Island formation. And we here have three sections too, but these three sections do not overlap. They are one about uh, the other. So these are our views from, 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 from the sections. This is HC from base to top, base to top and, and, and volcanics uh, of the James Island. This is a picture of the sample. All the Marambio group was unconsolidated, but that Hamilton point member is, is the worst. It's, it is just mad hell. It, it, it's terrible to work there. And uh, this is the middle section. This is a view of the middle section, another, another view from, from base to top, from base to the top, HE section. And this is the upper partial section, HD, from, from base to top base to top and, and the volcanics here, up here. So, so putting all the results together, what we see in this, in this three section is 
everything looks pretty much normal. And, and one thing I forgot to say, when, when you see solid symbols, it's because uh, directions were isolated using uh, principal components analysis. So empty symbols were obtained from, from great circles. So except for this level here, and maybe this one here, but pretty close to horizontal, and this one, and, and, and this one, most of the of, of the sections are, are normal. So we will see the, the, the correlation together. So, so crossing the sea, uh, the, the last part of, of our outcrops are uh, here at, at Cerro Nevado or Snow Hill Island. So Santa Cliffs member, it outcrops here in this noon attack. It's a very um, it's a very particular place, Unitech, because you're surrounded by ice and, and you're here on, on this basing and all you see around you is ice. It's, it's pretty it's pretty depressing sometimes. And well here at, at the back is the Sanctuary Eclipse member. We we were just we we were just dropped by the helicopter here. So we were setting up the, the campsite. So this is Sanctuary Cliffs here, and this is a view of the section taken from some point around here. And, and, and this is the section we, 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 we sampled. And these are the results for, for the Sanctuary Cliffs member. So um, normal at the base, uh, a, a, a short uh, reverse interval and, and two normal levels again. And then everything is, is pretty much reverse until the top. And, and behaviors, well, they, they, they are pretty similar to the rest of, of the Marambio group units. So there is one, one odd uh, level here. And about the sanctuary cliffs member, so one thing I, I didn't tell you, our, our, our principle to define a polarity, it was you, you, had to, you had to have more than one level in a row. That's why we, I, I do not consider this as a different polarity level. So about the Sanctuary Cliffs member, we have this Spat Peninsula, perhaps from Upper Snow Hill Island Formation, Haslam Crag Formation, and, and base of Lopez de Bertadana. So the, this is the map of the peninsula, and, and this is the section we walked. We, we had to move laterally here because we ran out of, of concretions to drill here. And, uh, um, this is a view of the of the Snow Hill Island and Haslam Crag uh, contact, yellow and, and green, taken from the helicopter. This is the same co uh, contact from, from another point of view. And, and here are the Dame Ross Island volcanic group uh, dikes. And, and they basically cross all, all, the, all the peninsula and, and they reach to, to Seymour or Marambio Island too. And this is a view of the Castle Crag, uh, Lopez de Bertolano contact, yeah, green and, and, and gray. And this is a picture of the concretions we, we drilled. Oh, um, there is a, a hut here, an historical hut from a, from a Norwegian expedition uh, that, that happened in 1901. So this, these guys uh, were supposed to stay one year here at, at, at Cerro Nevado, at Snow Hill. And they built this, this, this hut that now is like falling because it's built on a, on a nice cord um, rain. And these guys were supposed to stay for one year, but the boat that, that should have uh, picked them up didn't make it through the ice. So they have to stay two years there, but no food. So they, they had to hunt seals and penguins for, to survive. And this is the 2016 crew emulating the Norwegian expedition and you barely can distinguish which one is the original. So these are the results for the Spat Peninsula. And uh, everything is reversed here. So, so the first time I saw this, I, I, I thought that, I don't know, maybe it is remagnetized. Maybe this, this, this myosin dikes burned all the Cretaceous. And, but it, it is not. We, we actually compared uh, mean directions. We, we did a sort of baking test and, and no, there is no remagnetization and, and behaviors are very similar than to the rest of, of, of the Marambio group. So everything is, is reverse. 
except for some isolated levels, everything is reversed from, from base to top. Sorry, maybe so, it's uh, about for a few minutes until you finish. Okay, yeah, I'm almost done. So uh, this is the, the correlation we did. Uh, so this is C33N and, and this is definitely C31R. So, uh, so what is in the middle has to be C32. And, and, and we apply the polysecular variation filter and, and this one we, we put it as a question mark because, uh, well, it is just one level and, and it is pretty close to, to transitional. So, so, so this is the correlation we did. So for, for, for seeing everything together, like putting all sums together to, to, to build the puzzle, what we found here is that uh, normal Cretaceous supercrown, uh, we, we, we found it here, at Northwestern uh, James Ross Basin. Uh, we found the Santonian Campanian boundary there in, in, within Alpha member. Uh, we found this uh, C33 R C thirty three N reversion both in proximal and distal phases of the basin, and and this is this is a very good thing because uh, you have an extra correlation tool besides the ammonites, and um, we found the the companion restriction boundary some, somewhere here at the base of of Sanctuary Cliffs member, and and oh I'm sorry I I forgot to say this this. Top column was, was realized by Tobin and collaborators at, at 2012. It's not a part of, of my job. But what is striking here is that this C31 cron is, is too thick, right? So, so comparing, we calculated some sedimentary accumulation rates and, and, and this C31 interval yields like five times the the sedimentary accumulation rates than the rest of the units. And it, it makes sense, I mean, those values are, are within the reasonable values for, for these transitional marine environments. This, this stratigraphic interval was interpreted as, as deltaic deposits, uh, Haslum crack, sandstone actually, it is a, a, a forced regression sand package deposited probably in a very short uh, amount of time and then estuary deposits. So it is reasonable, but it's still like five times the rest of the, of the calculated values. So the explanation we, 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 we seeked for, for, for this increase uh, had to do with, uh, the, at the time there, there was closed the backyard uh, rock spare spacing in South America and the Antarctic Peninsula in South America were pretty much closer than what they are today. So we believe that this uh, increase of sedimentary accumulation rates uh, had, has something to do with, with, um, with an orogenic uplift uh, in the Andes. Yes, because the, the, there is this um, Magashanes fold and thrust belt and, and people that work there in Tierra del Fuego, they have found several uplift pulses. So probably that had something to do with the, this increase in sedimentary accumulation rates. So these are the conclusions. This is the, the, um, the chronostratigraphic framework uh, that came out from magnetostratigraphy. So from sedimentary rates, we extrapolated the Canadian Antonium boundary to the hidden lake formation. And um, our Santonian Campanian boundary agrees pretty much with the, with the ammonites from Olivero. And uh, the Campanian restriction, well, it's pretty much lower than both uh, ammonites and ionocerimids. So that's that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, let's give Florencia a good round of applause. <laughs> Thank you, Florencia. Okay. okay, I stop sharing now. Oh, no, leave it in case maybe people have some questions, oh. uh, okay. if that's okay. Yeah, yeah. no problem. So, um, Uh, so there was a question by um, by Lisa, and it was regarding one of the pictures that you posted, and sure. and she asked if a sample I think seventy nine is in situ. Um, I don't remember the name of the formation, but uh, 
So it is a question about one sample. Yeah, I realized that you you were drilling um, concretions later. It just looked like a, it wasn't clear. It was a little wobble, right? It. I was just curious, how did you orient these? With magnetic compass, presumably? Compass and solar, when we have sol sun. So this one, or I think I know what you meant. No, first one where you showed a drill. Yeah. It doesn't matter. This one. Yeah, no, this it, one. It looks pretty wobble. I realize that you're drilling concretions, and they probably are in situ. So, I mean, so no, I, I mean, Maybe concretions moved when drilling, but, but they, they were in place. Okay, all right. Yeah, they were in place. Also, I had one more question if, uh, um, or comment, uh, and very nice presentation, by the way, thank you um, for updating us on this. I, I feel personally that it's much more convincing to show an equal area projection of all of the directions rather than all that rock mag stuff because um, uh, it tells you a lot more about the reliability of the directions, which is what MagStrat relies on, than any of those other things. So I just thought you should probably stick one of them there. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, I, I do have them. I didn't show them because I, I felt like it didn't have time. Because, well, yeah, all the other stuff, which is really irrelevant. <laughs> OK. Okay, so no, no much uh, rock mag, more directional data. Because what's the rock mag tell you? Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't yeah. do anything about the directions. Yeah. That's just yeah. the way it's going, if you have okay. a little time. So show us the equal area project. There they are. Aha, nice. So, and these are for the Northwest. And these are for the southeast. And what happened in the southeast is that when um, including Cerro Nevado as no Hill Island data, it, it didn't pass a reversal test. I mean, every, everything has the, the same polarity pretty much here. So what we did was treat separately data from, from Cerro Nevado and data from Southeast Jim Ross and data from Northwest Jim Ross. And Cerro Nevado Island mean direction was a little tilted, like rotated. So that there is like another issue about directions here. So this is the, the mean directions from, from many Antarctic Peninsula Palimag data, and these are yeah them for the tilt. You can measure this tilt, right? So yes, them, right. So so this is our Cerro Nevado direction, and it was moved. So we compared it with the Dykes mean, which is pretty wide alpha, but it, it was the data we had. So what we proposed, it was in a different paper, not in the magnetostratigraphy. This is these are, are, are the myosin dikes mm -hmm. data. Is that there might be a rotation in Southern Nevada because the, this separately, the distribution separately, it makes sense. But when putting everything together with the rest of Southeast data, it didn't. So we had to separate populations. So this is this is the directional data. I don't know if. So why do you expect the Cretaceous directions to be the same as the Miocene one? Was that, maybe I misunderstood you. Oh, because the first time we saw this open direction, I thought there might have been a remagnetization so and that I have something to do and that no. I was just looking for some for uh, sources that had uh, modified that directions that were not a tectonic rotation, but I didn't find them. So that's why I think it is rotated. 